Placentia Bay is big and beautiful. You get a sense of space and grandeur here, in the deep fjords and among the lonely islands. Wandering about the bay, you can't help but feel a touch of sadness, though, at the empty harbors, the places where generations of Newfoundlanders were born, lived, and died. They boarded up their homes and left, many of them never to return. And the places with the beautiful names, Toslo, Marachine, Isle Vallon, became ghost towns. But not quite, for men came back to fish, and they continue to do so. In fact, there's much more than a spark of life remaining on the islands of Placentia Bay. Today, we visit one of these islands and one of the families who return each spring and help keep their island, Marachine, alive. Marachine refused to die. Each spring, the harbor continues to echo with the sounds of engines and voices. The same sounds that were heard here 20 years ago, when Marachine was one of the largest communities in Placentia Bay. Each morning, the boats leave for the fishing grounds as they've always done. It's a short steam to the white sails and to the other shoals near the island. Jim Barry was born on Marachine. So was his son, Gerald. Gerald's two oldest sons, Tony and Gerald Jr., or Carrot as he's better known by, were born in southeast Placentia. That's where the Barrys moved back in 1950, long before the main exodus of Marachiners. It was years later, in the mid-60s, before the resettlement fever swept through the bay. But though the Barrys left Marachine, Though Jim and Gerald both worked away for years on the coastal boats, they've always kept an interest in their island. They've kept coming back. They've kept up their interest in the fishery. And now they're back at it full time. Three generations of berries fishing together on Marachine. The twine is dried up. There's a few fish in the trap, but they know they won't fill the boat today. That's the way it is with the trap fishery, feast or famine. Some days there's not enough for a meal. Other times there's so much fish you can hardly handle it all. Early in the season it was lobsters the berries were after. Now it's the cod trap they've got their hopes pinned on. Later it will be gill nets and then trawls, each in its season. Added together, it's a livelihood. Jim is not too fussy about the trap fishery anyway. He likes line trawling best. Like most South Coast men, he fished that way on the bankers years ago. You can tell, I suppose, by the way he handles the dory. But it's not a trawl Jim has out today. It's a salmon net.
Salmon fishing brings in quite a few dollars to some fishermen. In some places, of course, it's the main fishery. Here, well, it helps out, but the fishermen don't count on it. Still, this summer, there were days when the berries had 20 salmon in their nets. And at prices of $1.85 to $2.25 a pound, that was a good help. Whoops, you don't get them all. Jim watches a $10 bill swim away. Back at Marachine, the other boats are in, and the morning's catch is being landed and weighed. While landings at Marachine aren't anything like they used to be in the days when the fishery was in full swing here, there's still a fair amount of fish being landed. Enough to encourage National Sea to install shore facilities and to set up a regular collection system. The fish is weighed and held in ice for the collectors, which arrive daily from Arnold's Cove. The collectors also pick up flounder, turbot, wolffish, catfish, dogfish, redfish, and other species too. Fishermen on Marachine today can sell most of what they can catch. Well, here come the berries. Maureen, Gerald's wife, is there on the wharf, waiting for the men to return. She comes out to Marachine in June, as soon as the younger children are out of school. They've got seven altogether between the ages of 13 and 20. So far, only the two oldest boys are fishing full time. The rest, well, they're waiting their turn to join their brothers, their father and their grandfather on the fishing grounds. Maureen does more than tend her flock of men out here on the island. She handles the receipts and payments for the fish and takes care of all the paperwork. For the berries, fishing is a family affair. There aren't too many women out here on Marachine. A few come out to cook for their husbands, some come out for a holiday. But for Maureen Barry, the happiest day of the year is the day she bundles up the youngsters and sets sail for Marachine. You've still got time to get um, quite a bit of fish. Oh, yeah, I was curious about life on Marachine in the summer. What does it mean to the people who come here? Is it just a way of making a living? Or is it something deeper that pulls them back to the island? Well, we come out in um, probably the first week in April. Then we, we started lobstering, and lobster the first, then we tried cat trap. Is that just you now, or you and your father? No, and it was sons? the father, and, yeah, and two sons. Then I take the wife out in, in, in June, the wife and youngsters in the school clothes. 
would be trapped in it at that time, in June. So. I was brought Nathan. Then we go to Ireland and follow you. Know, you take the youngsters back. back in September, so oh, yeah, the back small back ones. Back school, yeah. Yeah. Is it a good life out here? Beautiful. Wonderful life. Nice and clean here. Yeah. What is it about Mirachine that makes you really want to come back now? Is it because you can make uh, do well at the fishery? Or is it because you really like it here? Well, it's a nice place and there's, there's handy to fishing grounds. You know, it's, just, it's only, only a half hour, an hour, and you're out, out to, the, to the fishing grounds. Whereas in Presentia, you're, you're, you're two, two and three hours and then you're still nowhere, so. How about you, Maureen? You can, I can understand uh, Gerald coming out here. Now he was born and raised here. Do you like coming out here too? Yes, I enjoy the summers a lot out here because, well, the place is clean. The kids all like it here, so they seem happy with the fishing and everything. So I pack up and leave when school closes. Do you look forward to it in the spring? Oh, yes. <laughs> what but about the youngsters? Do they look forward to it too? Well, yes, because really where we live, there isn't that much for them to do. Well, out here, they can go for, out, you know, jigging or they can go to the trap. And they can fish just along, you know, on the wharf there. They can use the boats all day long. And they like that, so. So I guess it's, it's a free life for them, is it? Oh, yes. And then when the berry season comes, everybody's at that. And they pass away a good share of the summer by the time the bake apple season is over. I hear you got a, quite a few bake apples yourself this year. Around 20 gallons. I have enough for the winter. <laughs> I suppose you do, <laughs> 20 uh, <yeah>. gallons. <laughs> yes, I won't be in one to them for a while. Do many uh, other women come out here now with their husbands? or? Well, this year there's a couple of families are out for the summer. And, well, there's always somebody bringing their wife and family, you know, for a week or two weeks around there. So there's always someone around, you know. So this year more than ever, really. So you're not lonely when Gerald goes out and boats at all? Oh, no. I don't mind it a bit. What about in, when September comes down, the first of September, and you've got to go back, and the kids got to go back to school? I guess it's a pretty bleak day for the younger ones, is it? Yes, because, well, they're not too fond of the idea of going back to school. And, well, they're so used to being running free all summer to get buried in, you know. It's not their idea of a happy day. <laughs> I suppose when they leave now in the morning after breakfast, you hardly see them until it's supper time, do you? No, I don't see nobody till 4.30 in the evening. Till Everybody's gone. I'm all alone. <laughs> so. Do you fish with Gerald too now sometimes? Oh, well, trap season. I mostly go to trap. Scatter day jigging, I go out. They have to be half decent, though. Do you like it on the water? Yes. Mm -hmm. I never get seasick, thank God. What about Gerald? Is she, is she a helper or is she just in the way when she goes out and boat? Well, I had to say she's a helper. She's too close to me. <laughs> <laughs> Knows no, better. She, she don't be sick or anything, so... As long as she's not sick, she's no better. As long as I don't create a problem.
Did you come out here now when you were young too to visit or, or no. was just after you got married? No, well, six years ago, I guess, was the first time I ever seen the place, really. Because to be honest, before he started in the fishery, I didn't even know what a fish looked like to, <laughs> up to then, you know. So it was only since then that so I've been out here. Fishing wasn't a part of your No, I didn't know time. anything at all about fishing, now, to be truthful. Mm -hmm. I used to see an odd fish, but not very many. <laughs> That's so all. This is, was a completely new life for you. Oh yes, I'll get a different for me. Did you take to it right away and enjoy it? Oh yes. It? I only came for a holiday the first trip, but then I got the idea of coming back every day. I liked it, so. Oh, there's no way they'd keep you back, I suppose. Not now. <laughs> no. A walk in the evening on the hills of Maraschine. The excuse? To get some browse for the pet rabbits. But this is only an excuse. Really, it's a chance to talk, to laugh, and to remember. Spring passes into summer, summer into fall. Hands blistered at hauling lobster lines and calloused at the cod traps are now hardened for the trawl fishery. In August, the lines are set around Maraschine. The berries will fish this way till late October. Then the collector will stop coming. It will be time to join the rest of the family in Placentia to tally up the year's profits and 
to get ready for next spring. These are the best fishing grounds in Placentia Bay. That's what drew people to Maraschine in the first place, and that's what will continue to draw them. It's a different kind of fishery now, a different way of life. Not everyone will go back to it. It's not likely Maraschine will ever live again as a community. Still, who knows? The Barrys have just built a new house and hundreds of people descended upon the place for a reunion this summer. But it's one thing to go back for a holiday. It's another thing to go back year round as a fisherman. There are three generations of Barrys now fishing on this boat. Gerald's decision to return to the fishing boat gave his father, Jim, a new lease on life, a new surge of pride in being a fisherman again. He loves it out here. So do the boys. Placentia is home, but Maraschine is in their blood. The skills of fishing have not been lost. The saddest day for many is the day they have to leave. Around the end of August, you see the youngsters creeping down to the wharf. Summer is over. Soon school will start. Dogs, kids, pots and pans, dolls and blankets, bake apples and handbags. Everything has to be gathered together and loaded on board. You got a hold of Michelle? Okay. The Fitzgeralds are on their way. They're friends and neighbors of the Barrys. You want to go down there? Maureen is down to see them off. Hey, Joe. <laughs> no, Diane, please. We'll see you in Well, it will soon be over for the young Barrys, too, and for Maureen. They cling to Maraschine till the last possible moment. They roam the hills. They row the dories. They savor the last of their Maraschine summer. Then it's time for them to go too. It's two and a quarter hours over to Placentia on a good day. And that's what they've got, a good day. Next week, it's school. Maraschine will be a memory. The hills will be empty now, the harbor a bit quieter. Only the men will return to fish and to batch for themselves till mid-October when the fall gales will force an end to the fishery.
The Barrys will be back again in force next year. And from what we hear, there are other families talking about spending the summer there too. No, Mary Sheen has not died. It's still there. And the fish are still schooling out there too, on the white sails and the iron skull, in Wild Cove and Fox Point and around the dirty rocks. More importantly though, Maraschine is alive in the hearts and minds of its people. It's a special place, even for those who will never return.